The news with Gina Grad. Well, Papa John's founder John Schnatter is heading for divorce from his wife of 32 years, according to TMZ. Annette Cox filed the paperwork Thursday in Kentucky, saying her marriage to John is irre- irretrievably broken. According to the docs, uh, she says they separated back in April. They've been married since April 1987. And of course, you may remember that John was ousted from his pizza company last year following a little a uh, little, little um, N-word scandal. Uh, meanwhile, Schnatter's also suing the creative advertising firm Laundry Service and its parent company because he claims it leaked the audio that <clears throat> led to him losing his job. <clears throat> and- uh, this, uh, these people I want put on fucking Devil's Island <clears throat> in uh, French Guyana. The like, thing where it's like somebody uses the N-word as an example or a negative example, or this guy used it, why am I... And then you go, oh, I must share this with the world. <laughs> Fuck you. That's right. God damn it. I'd rather have a fucking arsonist live on one side of me and a pedophile live on the other than your fucking piece of shit, pathetic, sorry ass. That is such a weird impulse. The rat out. And like yeah. I just thought people need to know. Need to know what? that This guy... In a, in a room with no black folk in it who is using this as an example that you needed to convey that with the world? Fuck you. Well, Papa John mm. agrees because he insists the comments were taken out of context, like you said, and used as an excuse to get rid of him. He claims it was a revenge job because he refused to pay the company $6 million fee. Uh, you mentioned, uh, Gina, that I guess uh, the, the wife says the marriage is irretrievably broken. broken. I would say that uh, Papa John's... Uh, Irretrievably broken would be that that, that uh, recipe for pizza. Because I'm not a fan. But let me say this about the N-word, if I may. This is sure. a spot to do it, right? Yeah. How quickly in such a short time things have changed. A number of years ago, Adam and Gina, I'll say like maybe five years ago, there was a story that uh, in here in L.A., we talked about it on the air, and the story was about the N-word. And it came from The View, as I recall. And I said to the listeners on a, you know, on a, AM talk show in that environment. I said, Adam, to the listeners, uh, it's about the N-word and the appropriateness of using this word, and will they let the people on the show use the word? I said, so for uh, just for a transparent discussion, the word will be said because the story is the word. Yes. And I, uh, in the course of that conversation, said that word. And uh, there was no problem. Nobody said there was not a complaint, nothing from anybody. A couple of years ago, there was a similar story. And just I got the word, oh, we don't even do that story because we don't say that word ever and you'd be fired if you do. And I understand I, I, do, I, I understand their sensitivity to what could come down on them from advertisers. But in that short time of only several years, the standard changed so dramatically. It's all context. Mm-hmm. Everything is context. Like people argue over, are you allowed to rap along with a Snoop Dogg song mm. Or NWA song. Like, are you you've allowed been to Kanye West concert, to, people to <laughs> do it? Everyone and sings it's like, along. Maybe yes, album. you are. That you are because there's a context to it. Because mm-hmm. there is a major difference between using it in, in a pejorative way and then singing along with a black person you idolize and have paid 70 bucks to get a ticket for. I don't, we've now, what we've done with context, if we've thrown context out the window, when you throw context out the window, then you throw everything out the window because it's all you have. I agree. If you throw context out the window, you cease to think because everything must be thought about and deliberated in the context in which it's heard, said, or considered, right? But, and also this notion of and I'm not surprised, you know, the marriage went south because you take a guy and he builds this business up from the ground up. And guys are very intertwined with their business. Now, some guys that just are postmen or garbage men or some of the man on the end of, you know, there's the guys who just go in, punch the clock and come home. You know, they're, they're a janitor at a local high school. They're not... Their business isn't their their personality. It isn't. It doesn't. It it, 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 it isn't them. defining them. But when a guy builds a business, it defines him. And especially a guy like that who's mm-hmm. in front of the camera with he's Peyton Papa Manning. John. He's Papa John or whatever. When that gets ripped away from you, it's not like getting fired from your janitor gig. It is your whole world comes apart. And God, uh, 
God help the woman who's living with that guy who has nowhere to go. That's, That's totally it. true. That's totally true. Uh, but something tells me he'll land on his feet because he is still worth an estimated $500 million. Mm-hmm. But I understand he might be in an identity crisis. Uh, and yeah. I just want to show you, uh, Kaylin, I think we have it. Um, the video that is just has gone so viral in the last few days of uh, Papa John himself claiming how many pizzas he's been eating. Oh, yeah. I feel 39. Um, mm. So negative and pessimistic about the company that I've sold a, a, a lot of stock. I've probably had over 40 pizzas, 40 in the last 30 days. It's way off. It's, they don't make the pizza yeah. the way that I used to make it. The way- <laughs> Wait a minute, how do you feel about that? <laughs> yeah, I feel that this man... Child's play. It's a I good start. <laughs> I don't know, oh, does he not do anything all day? Does he have an appetite? 40 pizzas. I mean, well, I'm supposed to be shocked by that? Jeez. Yeah, anyway, uh, as I've always said, uh, Papa John Phillips had consensual sex with his adult daughter, and we judge him much less than we judged a guy who was quoting Colonel Sanders in yes. a closed-door meeting. Right. Okay, can we get our fucking priorities straightened out? To that point, we just want lunch. Yes, I mean, it's fast food. You know what I'm saying? It's, it should take 10 minutes of your day, tops. I agree. I mean, Chick-fil-A... Fa- uh, Chick-fil-A can't open in the uh, whatever airport in Texas. And for the love of Christ, woke assholes, can we just leave the fucking fast food out of it? Dude, I've said this on the air. I've said it to friends. I've said it for years. My activism ends where my stomach begins. <laughs> right. I swear to God that's true. Uh, you know, not uh, Chick-fil-A, the owner, maybe he doesn't agree with some stuff, I think, or, uh, you know, business XYZ, there's a difference. If there's a good chicken sandwich, you know, oh. for, for Jay Leno maybe, in there, or a great pizza in there, you do your business, you do your commerce, and if we like it, your service or product will buy it. And to me, it's inherently un-American to decide that because someone disagrees with you on a political issue, you will try to strangle them financially. Mm-hmm. I, th- th- that is so foreign to me, and I think is foreign to this nation. It's, it's, it's leading, we're heading into this realm, and it is, it, it is a self-esteem movement. Which is almost every subject when I was 19 or 20, almost every, every subject, it's, if it's like, hey, they want to, uh, they don't want Chick fil A to open at the, uh, what airport? Amarillo, oh. some, somewhere in Texas. Atlanta? No, it was oh. in Texas, but whatever. I, they, I remember that story. Or uh, Ben Shapiro's going to UC Berkeley to speak. What do you think? My answer would be, I'm 20. What the fuck do I know? Mm-hmm. I don't have any thoughts on that. <laughs> I mean, if Ben Shapiro wants to go speak, and go speak. And if they want to have a Chick-fil-A at the airport, at the San Antonio airport, that's one of those. Then they can have a Chick-fil-A. What, what does that have to do with yeah. It doesn't have anything to do with me. Now everyone at the self-esteem movement is me. Yeah. Gotta I got to weigh gotta I got to do something about this. And- Brian, please. You got to post. You got to post something. You got to tweet. You right. know what's really good? It's really good, I think, to avail yourself to stuff that isn't about you. If it's not about me, maybe it'd be kind of interesting for me to hear a little something about it. I am on the air, the, the lovable liberal, right? Uh, I, I never say that because people might hate me. I know some of them do, in fact. So I'll let people who listen decide if they like me or not. But. I am, you know, you can call me a liberal. Uh, not, not, I'm not a progressive. I don't use that term. I'm a liberal guy. I, and if you're going to call yourself that word, it, it, the L word, liberal, mm-hmm. there's a few boxes to check. And one of them is free, freedom of speech. And, and, and you have to check that box with a permanent marker. And I don't know when it ever became in vogue, for lack of a better term, for self-described liberals to try to stop, to try to, through protest or uh, potentially violence by putting one's body in a certain area to halt the speech of someone simply because the words are disagreeable to them. Uh, that is not at all what liberalism, to well, me, has ever represented. When you sign off at nine, the guy who comes in and does the show after you, after your show, Dennis Prager, always says, we, and, and I used to hear him say this three years ago, and I was sort of like, well, okay, now I really... Left and liberal. We need a definition, and we need to have. We need to know we're not the same thing. Yeah, folks. I'm often liberal. Will... You're liberal. Not left. The left wants this shut down. I don't think liberals want the speech shut down. The left does. It's a great point because people all the time will say, "Oh, but first guy to say to a buddy of mine, he said he's a he's a 
what his doctor. He, goes, he said to me, he said, Brian, he said, he's very conservative, dude. Actually, he's a libertarian is really what he is. He said to me, Brian, he said, um, you know, I enjoy listening to you for what. And by the way, you know this, Adam, better than anyone because you're a living, breathing demonstration of it. What one's political views or thoughts might be are secondary always to the entertainment value of the show. I think that's true. Sure. And uh, he said to me, he said, but you're, you know, you're a liberal. You're not a leftist. And that was about eight years ago. And it's the first time anyone articulated for me this difference, this perceived difference between the two, whereas leftist is viewed, I know, by my friends who are on the right as more dangerous, as potentially more dangerous, sometimes even physically. Uh, you look at Antifa and things like this and uh, – and liberal is perceived as, okay, Whitman's a liberal. He's a John Kennedy. I'd say Bill Clinton, uh, you know, Bobby Kennedy, liberal, you know, in the, in the uh, Walter Mondale, Hubert Humphrey, liberal in that, in that kind of center lane. All right. What else you got, uh, Gina? Well, oh, yeah. can I make one question. quick point about yeah. that story? That the very, very, very end of the story. First of all, it's a separate point. I agree with you. The, the instinct to release this audio, either vindictively or whatever, that's that's a horrible instinct. Makes you a horrible person. The thing you mentioned at the very end of the story that I don't think a lot of people. Mm. I didn't realize this until you said it. Mm -hmm. He owed them six million dollars in unpaid services. He pay. I didn't say owed. That's, that's not the oh, words okay, that were used. Okay. Just, just to be specific. Oh, please. He refused to pay them a $6 million fee, whether pay that was foisted your upon him or not. bills, everyone. Yeah. I know my wife's in advertising and PR, and I know I hear all the time companies refusing to pay their bills or being late on bills <clears throat> six months later. There's no, no word, no contact, and asking for more work. Pay your fucking bills, and this might not happen. Like, this may have been more of a, like, a fuck this guy. Like, Vendetta. He, yeah, we're all oh, we're, we're, it definitely we're, we're, makes, it definitely has a context now. Like, why would your own? Own team rat you out. Your yeah. own man crisis manager. You and they, owe them yes. six million. A reputable right. firm that wouldn't do that unless they're six million yeah. in the red. It's no. like, but this guy's not going to pay us. Might right. be a factor in that whole story. I would, I would say now I'd have to know more. Like, were the, is there an extortion there, element there of be. this? But I, I agree. If, if this is why this now because it was bothering me the whole time that why would your own person rat you out? Yeah, that makes sense. A possible answer. You're you're carrying a balance of six million, and I, I think I'm. I mean, I'm not a pushover, but I don't know, like like the biggest set in the world. I if I needed new work done, <laughs> and my balance was six mil, don't know that. I'm pretty audacious. Don't know that I have it to make the call to request. So, like, if your guard, if you owed your gardener six million dollars, yeah. yeah. and you had a dead tree in the back, yeah, and you wanted him to come by yeah. and take care of that tree, I'd have a tough time calling um, with the six million balance. And that really is your you're drilling in on the reason I'd have trouble calling the fact that he has done six. Million so dollars a worth. Yeah, it's a work. factor. Yeah, it's a factor. It's not all. It's a, but it's, it's a, a factor. Contributing, it's a, it's a contributing, it's a contributing factor. factor. He's done six million dollars worth of work. I paid him none of it, and now I'm calling oh. him for new work. All right. Well, let me let me keep going down this road. You have another gardener. Okay. He's your old gardener. He does. You he, only owe him three point five million dollars. Well, would you call him then? Instead, or would you find a totally new gardener? I, I, I don't know. I, I'm asking questions. It's a fair question. I'm going to give you an honest answer. I call. The I would call the lesser. Uh, yes, and just or, no, no, no. I would probably call a new. A new start 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 but I want Brian answer. Oh, oh no, oh, no, no, no. It's an important question. Yeah, it's a fair question, and I'm going to. It's an honest question. I'm going to yeah. give you an honest answer. Okay. I would call the gentleman to whom I owed 3.5 million, and I would say I have a tree that went down the backyard. I'm calling only though to ask if you might remove the branches because i'll get the uh, trunk the you main know, trunk yeah, i'll th that i'll do uh-huh because i understand we ha there's an issue here i understand right there's oh, some so it takes something off his plate yeah some work was done previously and and i i think i understand there's a balance then this i understand there might be a balance that, right oh, that's and, good and uh so i'm gonna remove the trunk but i can't do that until you get rid of the branches and now what if he said it's eighty six fifty to do the branches oh. and then you got your checkbook out mm -hmm. and he said on top of the 3.5. Well, now we're at loggerheads. I mean, now we're talking $3,586.50. Yo, you could just round up to, uh, you know, just make it $100. Because sometimes the check, you run out of room. You asked a fair and honest question, and uh, my honest... Well, I, wanted, I honestly want an answer. I, I want to know. At that I'm asking at because that I want to know. At that point, <laughs> with an exorbitant fee of eighty six fifty for branch removal, I would have to do what you originally suggested. Call a new gardener, because that 
is highway robbery. That's ridiculous. Okay, yeah. he should be he should be put in jail now, I for charging eighty six dollars. This may dollars. be a stupid question, but did did this happen or is, or is this a hypothetical? I, this is totally hypothetical. Oh, okay, yeah, this okay. Is, yeah. All right, all right. Well, well, then we can move that forward. Is, that is not a fair question. That's out of the box. I, I, I was a little. I was swimming a little yeah, no, in this no, world no, that we created. Yeah, okay, so it's not, so you. But but do you owe your gardener money? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Move forward, Jean. Well, we talked a little bit about OJ earlier, and Caitlyn Jenner can't seem to stop revealing family secrets on the UK reality show, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. And this time, she's talking about OJ. By the way, so, in the, yeah. uh, in the uh, annals of good reasons of why you don't return an email, mm-hmm. I shot an email out to Caitlyn like a few weeks ago, and she didn't hit me back. Mm-hmm. She's and I was busy. like, what the fuck? Big Stuck time. up. Big and then time. it's like, yeah, but if you're in England and you're doing yeah. a reality show where you're trapped in the woods. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. She has the one that. reason. I'll That's right. That. But mm-hmm. if she's trapped in the woods, there, there, there are cameras. I mean, I don't think they're relying exclusively on generators <laughs> to, re, to film this uh, reality show. Mm-hmm. There's something to plug. So it's always like Osama bin Laden. He was on the run in Afghanistan living in caves. Yet. We got emails. We got videos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm-hmm. videos. Thank you, Brian. Specifically. Right. And where from, where did, uh, where the electricity? You know, I'm a stickler for the power companies. I had a uh, funny exchange. <laughs> it is funny when you do shows that you sort of were talking about uh, right, left, whatever. When you do the left shows, right. you can crack wise about your wife, make jokes about this, that, and the other. When you go on like the Fox and Friends stuff and you start making those kind of jokes, they get very, they, they get the pucker factors. Uh, it's all right, it's at a nine. And I always just do that. Like I've been on, I don't know, what was that Fox show with all the three chicks or whatever? And I was just sitting in there and I was like, hey, hypothetical. <laughs> Who's had sex the least over the last 10 years? Bill and Hillary Clinton or Oprah and Stedman? And they all looked at me and they went, what? No. <laughs> no, we're not going to answer that. I was like, well, that's a funny. Well, come on. Come on now. Yeah, right. Come on now. Come on. And they're like, it's 922. The- no. Like, I, don't, I, don't, I never realized where I am. Isn't that funny? I said to, uh, I did uh, Martha McCallan's show on Fox, who's pretty down the middle, but still on Fox. Yeah. And, and she's like got the blonde hair and everything. Oh, that one. Oh, thank you for identifying her with a physical character. <laughs> yeah. oh. She's oh, the, hold on. Super white teeth. Yeah. Oh, and blonde hair? Yes. Now I know. Now, because you know. I, was, I couldn't figure out who that might be, but now I know. Yeah, she really stands out. <laughs> and she was like talking about this uh, Peloton commercial, and I said, uh, listen. I got my wife hooked up to a stationary bike, which is attached to a generator that powers a kegerator and a big screen TV. And I just sit there all day watching it. And she's like, whoa, huh? Highly unlikely. <laughs> Highly regular. <laughs> I think that it, it's – I worked with Shapiro. We did the show together for years, oh, right, right? right? And I would say, you know, uh, something maybe, you know, that was like, you know, would otherwise offend. And he would say to me, and I think he was right. He'd say, Whitman, off the air. He'd say, you can get away with that because, like, you're a liberal. And uh, they believe, like, if you're a liberal, like, in your – which is, by the way, not true. They mm-hmm. believe your heart is so pure that you couldn't possibly seek to offend or wound right. the feelings of anyone. So you get that mulligan. Well, not a mulligan because that's only a one time. You just have, like, a lifetime pass to do anything offensive because if they look, well, you voted for, you know, an increase in the minimum wage. So right. say all the <laughs> say terrible you things you'd <laughs> like. <laughs> Is I, it, don't, we, I forgot. Brian and Ben worked together for a long time. I know. I saw Ben yesterday, actually. <laughs> I hope I he's well. Is he doing well? He's, I like to hear him. Yeah, yeah. I got. Uh, went right up the street from Martha's to uh, Ben's place and sat in on his like after show or something. I'm promoting oh, cool. no safe spaces. Cool. So and by the way, uh, doing well, right? Yeah. 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 Can I just propose hmm. – uh, tell me if I'm wrong here, Brian Whitman uh, – Look, that point of view where it's like you can get away with that because you're liberal is like looking for racism everywhere. Like, isn't it you can get away with it because you're funny and people know that you're coming from funny plays? And if Ben Shapiro tried to make a joke, it wouldn't go over so well. Well, I, I, yeah. it's funny, right? I mean, I'll reserve comment on 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 Ben's jokes, but I'll say I'll say to you that I would like it to be that they think, oh yeah, Whitman, you're funny, and we know you're not that serious about it. And I'd like that to be the reason. I thought it was. I brought it up to. To you guys, simply right. because it was his feeling that 
he identified it as one's liberal, one's political philosophy, uh, in my case, being a liberal guy, kind of exonerated me from any criticism on these hot yeah. button issues. That's a hammer looking for a nail, in my opinion. No, I, I agree. I think that if you just took, <laughs> let's say, you took a comedian mm-hmm. and you took like Tim Allen, right. who's like right leaning comedian. Right. right. And then you took like a Dave Chappelle or somebody who right. or, or I don't know, Tiffany Haddish or, or something or just a left. I don't know. Mike Birbiglia or something right. like that. I think Tim's got to watch it a little more. I don't think he can speak as freely, okay. and he would be hammered harder. I think that's true. I used to um, I used to do live shows with Hannity, and we would go we would go around the country, and we would do Dallas and San Diego. We'd go to different places, and the audiences, Adam, were and Gina and Brian, they were obviously. Uh, listeners to his radio show and they were people who were more inclined to be conservative than than not and um i would do a a whole comedy segment i actually found that conservative audiences at least were more willing or more desirous of getting a laugh from someone than than maybe a a, a liberal audience would be Well, now now at least i don't know what it's like now now you have to kind of look around to see if it's okay Mm. to laugh at a a joke which is sad well and you know glenn beck as well yeah i do you know everybody i'm uh, kind of you do know yeah i did a lot of work with glenn for many many even before he was famous i like to say Mm. What's your take on Hannity? Do you have a, a I mean, as, as a human being, I've never oh, met him. OK, I have one for you that I've only <laughs> I've only told once publicly. Oh. It, and you asked me as a human being. So um, yeah. folks may know, I think Gina has some probably vivid minds image recollections of some times that I was not fully present what? because uh, I was addicted to all sorts of sleeping pills and antidepressants and all of this. And I um, had known Sean for a long time back at WABC in New York. My first talk show that I did was the all night show from two to five in the morning, which was so much fun in New York because that's like, you know, Denver at, at three in the afternoon, I think right. there's so many people awake and Sean Hannity did 11 at two. And uh, so, Professionally, we knew each other that way, but you asked about personally, and I want to answer that because you've asked a fair question. Um, Because I want to know. Yeah. Personally, uh, we became friends at that time, and the friendship has lasted to this moment. And when I was working with Gina and our friend Conway at at, at CBS and you on our show, they said to me after one particular night of not sounding particularly present, they (laughs) said... "Um, Mm, probably you shouldn't come back. Uh, you know, maybe last night was about it for you. And actually, they didn't say it to me. They said it to my girlfriend. I slept through my firing, which, which was actually the way That's to the go. That's the way to go. So way, I want mm-hmm. a, a little advice. Do it that way if you can. <laughs> and so word within the, you know this, Adam, within the industry, word spread pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Oh, Whitman, they fired Whitman. Oh, why they fire Whitman? Doesn't he? Conway's great. He does well with Tim, you know. And then, so everybody, oh, he's got a real, like, he's, like, addicted to drugs. And I said, um, so that word spread quickly. And my phone rang. And it was the middle of the day. This is all true. I'm embellishing nothing. And it was Hannity. And he said, hey, you know, what's up? And I said, what's up? I said, I'm really not doing very well, you know. And he said, yeah, I heard. He said, I heard. And I said, uh, so, you know, I said, I appreciate the call, you know, and I, I felt that, that in that moment that he was calling just so I could hear a, an old friendly voice. And, mm-hmm. and that even that that would have been wonderful if it stopped right there. And he said to me, he said, he said, Brian, you know, you're, you're really sick. I said, I know. And he said, um, you need to so I was out of rehab. I'd been there for 30 days. And he said, Brian, you need to go to a doctor, to a psychiatrist. You need to see him every day. And I lived, uh, I live in the San Fernando Valley. And he said, the doctor's in Orange County, which, as you know, is about 90, uh, no, excuse me, haul. it's about uh, 50 miles away, 45 miles it, away. Yeah, it's 90 minutes, like, depending on when you leave. But it, it can be three hours, depending right. on when you leave. So Hannity says to me, you have to go, and you have to go every day. You have to go five days a week. Is, I'll just say his first name is George, and he will see you, and he deals with people really like you, specifically like you in terms of your disease, in terms of what you're doing, what you're abusing, in terms of your job, in terms of all of that. And I said, wow, that would be great. He said, the guy to see him every day, it's 25 grand. And I said, oh, I said, all right. Um, I said, I, uh, I mean, I was unemployed and I was just honest because he's my friend. I, I said, I'll see what I can do. And, and I will, um, try to throw together 25 grand. I say that to try to sound cool, but in the moment I'm going through my head, like, what bank is closest that I could rob? But, you know, and um, Hannity says to me, 
you don't have to do that. I've already paid him. Oh, my God. Well, that's wonderful. And um, in that moment, I cried in that moment because that kindness, the generosity, uh, I expressed like that and, and manifest in that way. And you asked me what he's like as a human being, as a person. That's the only story I could tell to answer that question because he's just really a very good person. I love wow. him very much. Wow. See, I, it's, it's weird know. to make these people into human beings. Mm -hmm. I, uh, yeah, I the inclination love. is to turn these folks into cartoon characters. Mm -hmm. Right. We'd encourage people, I would encourage you to see the human people being. People are more nuanced than that. All right, let's do one or two more. All right, well, we are not letting this Peloton thing go anytime soon because the man who plays the husband in the now infamous commercial, he's been called abusive, he's been called a symbol of the patriarchy. He is speaking out about his role in the spot while also seemingly embracing the newfound fame on Instagram. His handle is now Peloton husband. Would you <laughs> recognize him in a crowd? Never. I don't think anyone's Not, ever no. been on no. the subway and went, that's the Peloton guy. You know what's weird, though, is the uh, woman in the ad is not yet identified, which is very weird. She's oh, she's probably laying low. She's presumably a, an actress, yeah. you know what I mean? Like a commercial actress. She's probably in more spots than just, you don't get your first yeah. spot at National Peloton. Well, ad. to that point, Sean Hunter, that's Peloton husband, he's an actor, kind of, and an elementary teacher in Vancouver, and he wrote a long response to a Psychology Today article about his experience with the commercial. And they just shot that in September, by the way. He wrote, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. My five seconds of airtime created an array of malicious feedback that is all associated with my face. He went on to say that he's grappling with the negative opinions as none of them have been constructively helpful. I got to tell you, I do now have a thought. Um, taking a woman who looks sort of ethnic mm. And taking a blue-eyed dude, the blue-eyed devil, and putting him in charge of her yeah, he, sort of he thing brought her over here. I feel much Cherry like blossom. we started the show saying if the guy who was doing the commentary was black, I wonder. Mm -hmm. I wonder if she had, you know, if her husband was Dinesh D'Souza. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a whole different. That kind of might spot. change the whole story. All right, you know what? Fair point. <laughs> Oh, fair. It's, honest, a fair, it's honest, an honest question. And it deserves, a, but it deserves a fair answer. A fair, it, it truly <laughs> does. Right. Let's just say a man of Indian persuasion sure. who was unrecognizable or seemed to be from her region mm. of the world. I wonder, because it seems like the blue-eyed devils. Yeah, it and doesn't she's help. doing the bidding. You're and right. by, uh, the Peloton man, as he's called, I do have to say, because I was asked to do this, if you don't mind, I got a call from a friend of mine who's receiving a lot of negative emails over this Peloton man mm. um, controversy. Uh, you don't know his real name, but he is affectionately known worldwide as um, Hey Culligan Man. Oh, Hey and Culligan <laughs> Man. His yeah. email's exploding, and he'd like people to back off. I know you have some experience i don't want to embarrass you but i know you had were in some talks i remember your agent speaking to you at some point at least you told me this that the peloton people had approached your agent who had approached you to offer you some sum of money he never said how much never to be photographed next to a peloton piece of equipment i do so i know there's some no, connection it's, there it's correct he, he said uh it was actually it was a 20 yards it was 20 yards oh there was like a zone there was yeah. a 20 like a restraining order yeah he and help to walk across the street from a peloton display uh, right a that tradition be un unfair. A tradition, and it would be unfair. It would deserve an unfair response, obviously, to that question. But I, I, uh, I don't. I have no idea in terms of uh, law enforcement restraining orders what the distance is there, how close you can get to her. I no, mean, like when Jimmy was doing some spots for like Miller Beer at mm -hmm. some point, and at some point it was stipulated that mm -hmm. he could not be drinking a Bud Light right. or something of that nature. And we were golfing together. Yeah. That's all they had was like Bud Light. Don't do it. On the, and he's like, I can't take the whatever. Put I a paper him bag. A, call him a pussy and drank the beer for him. But that's sort of what yeah. we're talking about with you and Peloton. But for me and Peloton, it's far more punitive because I would have to leave the room or the home because I cannot be 20 yards yeah. near a piece of furniture. Right, here's an honest question. If you want to get rid of me, throw an auto in the middle of the room and you'll just see me scramble. Question. If a Peloton... Honest question. Honest question Fair answer. Because I want an answer. If a Peloton commercial comes on the TV and you're in the room, does it, that count? You well, have to leave the room. That's dicey. I asked my attorney <laughs> and he said, um, he said, try this. He said... Um, Keep your ankle bracelet on, he said, for starters. Oh, yeah. they actually fitted oh, you with a device. It, they take it very seriously. He said, <laughs> I would turn the volume down on the television mm. and uh, and then sit tight. He said, 30-second spot, sit tight. 60-second spot, get to Mexico. I, I know 
I know you have the same agent as Artie Lang. I know this offer was extended to him as well. Was it a favored nations? Are we getting too far into the weeds? If you're not comfortable with any not, of his questions. Uh, it's an honest question, and uh, it deserves, obviously, in this context, an honest answer. I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't comment on Artie's business and, you know, what, what he does professionally uh, now or his finances, but uh, that, that very well may be that I did not pass on the offer. I took I know, the offer. I know. I think, I think people think they've heard of tastemakers. Yeah, right. They don't know that there's an opposite. Taste breakers. Taste, That's, they don't know there's a taste breaker. And they don't know that there are people working in this industry, and I represent them proudly, that they can come to mm. to fill that void. I know you've worked with Nobu, the sushi mm. restaurant. Yes. I, it was very, they said, you, it was odd, <laughs> they said, you must affirm everything. Always say yes. You cannot say no. I said I can't say. It. And they said, "Idiot, no boo! You don't say the right. don't say the word. Don't go." Yes, so, I understand. They don't know their taste breakers. Right. I think we all understand. And don't speak it on the, the air. The version of the hot blonde <laughs> yeah. standing and holding the beer at the bar. They don't know that there's a counter. You got to keep them that. away. But my exp- I'll just close with this with my thoughts on my experience with Peloton and, and the and the endorsement. Well, actually, it's, it's a, a de-dorsement. It's a yeah. de-dorsement. Un-dorsement. My yeah. de-dorsement uh, deal with them <laughs> right. reminded me when I was signing it, too, because it was emotional, because I right. hadn't had a deal like that ever, and I needed work, you know. But, I mean, this is obviously before Jaguar, Aston Martin, oh. Mercedes-Benz, uh, the aforementioned Nobu, Four Seasons, Ritz-Carlton, f- all some major players. Yeah. Major, you don't like to brag. I'm going to brag for you. They, my agent would say, wow, they're all in the queue. You know, he's, he's British. He's British. And he'd say, look, they're all that long and up. They've got to get a piece of you, but the Peloton deal, we've got to do it. So I was signing the Peloton de-endorsement deal. And I had to be 20 yards away from any item they manufacture and i was comforted in the moment adam mm. because I, I i was getting emotional and i, I put the pen down for a moment you, I, you bring a pen mont blanc i think mm. makes pen. i think ab- that's also part of your absolutely deal. it's i i was Bundle. very early on in that deal yeah and I, I as well with as rolex sorry i thought of my dad <laughs> i did i thought of my dad and if you're a guy a close relationship with dad my dad's in heaven i thought what would my what would my dad's counsel be for me in this moment i did i thought I thought about my dad at my dining room table. I didn't have a dining room. I'm just a kitchen. I live in a studio apartment. It's not even a kitchen. I was on the bed sitting on the edge of it with a folder eating a Stouffer's uh, Lean Cuisine, whatever, uh, that I put in the microwave. I thought, what would my dad say to me? I remembered in that moment Mm. what my dad always said at moments like this. He said, Brian, it doesn't matter if you win or lose. It doesn't matter if you make a lot of money or you lose a lot of money. My dad said to me, he said, what matters most? is that no one finds out that you're my son. <laughs> oh, so you had a, de- oh, a de-endorsement right. deal yeah. with your, your first wow. de-endorsement. And I said, I've done this before. I signed it. Signed and here it. we go. Wow. Back in wow. business. That's why I had, that. I had to ask. Well, right, fair let's, question. Let's do one more. <laughs> was, it, was it fair? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. There it is. is. Oh, sitting next to her. <laughs> She's a hostage. Uh, <laughs> she does look terrified now when you put it in that context. Uh, hey, before uh, we get too far, it hasn't come up yet, but uh, a lot of people ask me where the drops come from. Where's this drop, that drop? One of my favorite, our favorite drops. <laughs> Brian Whitman. Yeah. As, as evil Tom Likas. <laughs> or Tom Likas. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. Whoa, wait. I'll probably get a phone book size, uh, cease and desist, and uh, I have a deal. Uh, you don't say my name, I don't say yours. <laughs> Well, you didn't say it, I did. Yeah, right. Such a compliment that everybody thought that He that also, was but there's another de-endorsement deal that he had accepted. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Yeah. All right, one more, Gina Grant. All right, well, a 28-year-old man was arrested after face-punching a couple of McDonald's employees for getting his order wrong. A court document states that he uh, left his food, but later returned to the fast food restaurant, walking behind the front registers into the employee area where customers are not allowed to go. Uh, he then proceeded to assault an employee at the restaurant register with his fists. I gotta, his, yeah. I gotta say this. I worked at McDonald's. Mm. I hated it, but I gotta tell you, the difference between, and everyone goes, well, working at McDonald's sucks, right? You, but you don't understand. There's two McDonald's. Mm. There's work the cash register and stand over the griddle. Standing over the griddle is like working at five McDonald's. Like, it's <laughs> literally a hot manhole cover that just emanates grease. heat and grease and spatter and you just stand there with cute onions that smell cuticles that smell like onions like making burn versus standing at the counter but yeah. I'm now glad in this yeah. day and age I'm glad when I worked there 
I was destroyed that I had to work the grill because yeah. what, I know dudes seriously who work there who were never allowed to cook. They never got to the fryer. They never got to the grill. Brutal. That's brutal. Well, you were brutal. front of house. Yeah, <laughs> you were yeah. the face of the company. Yeah. And what just happened at Popeyes? There's been stabbings. They carried a woman out and body slammed her. So this is just uh, another one. Yeah. I have to say that uh, the other evening in Glendale, California, I was at a McDonald's, and this is true. It was I. So I have a new idea, and I'm actually going to lobby McDonald's. I I believe they ought to change the way they transact the, the money. I believe at McDonald's, you should not pay for your food until they have given it to you. For at 9 p.m., I ordered my standard order, and uh, I say that that's real self important to call it my standard order. It's just hamburgers and McNuggets. Mm-hmm. I waited 25 minutes. Mm. I was with another guy. Twenty, tw- he ordered twenty-five minutes, and I'm thinking, really, we should leave. But and especially, you paid. W- and when right. the when the time that you're waiting thirty-one minutes exceeds the number of homeless people in the ball crawl at that mm-hmm. point, twenty-eight. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think that's time to go. Yeah. But I can't walk out on twenty-six bucks because he eats and I eat, and I ain't walking out on twenty-six bucks. They're holding it hostage, and I have to sit there and wait. They, you should pay. Good policy <laughs> change. Although I, I wonder in this day and age, bringing up the homeless, if there'd be a lot of dining and dashing oh, if you yeah. slid the bag mm-hmm. up. And I, I, I you, well, the mm-hmm. culture we're living in, I think a lot of people just run for the door. In the Midwest, you pay for your gas after you pump it. I, I got to L.A. and I didn't understand why anyone would pay for their gas before they actually got their gas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's bring it home, baby girl. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Gina, Gina. That was the news with Gina Grad.